join me in somewhat unfamiliar surroundings. First of all, I'm in Beijing. That's 5,000 miles away from home geographically speaking. Culturally speaking, the gap's even further. Secondly, and maybe even more bizarrely, I'm currently at residence in this seven-star hotel. Seven? I've certainly never been to one of these before. The whole place is made from granite that's been imported from Italy and the facilities are absolutely world class. And this is my own personal butler, Adam. Thank you very much, Adam. To be honest, I feel a bit sorry for poor old Adam. I'm sure he's brilliant at being a butler, but I don't know what to ask a butler to do. I don't think I'm making the best use of his skills. As you can probably tell from my luxurious surroundings, I've come to China's capital to really see how the other half live. You see, I need to experience the super rich lifestyle before I can fully appreciate the merits of this, the Bentley Flying Spur. This four-door luxury saloon is the preserve of those who are properly moneyed up. Whether you drive it yourself or you buy it to be driven around in, it has to justify a massive outlay. That means it needs to be comfortable, refined and fast. It needs to exude class from every panel and be stuffed full of the latest gadgetry. To see if it delivers, I'm going to be experiencing life at both ends of the car. Somebody else is going to be doing the driving on the way out of Beijing, so I can see what the spur's like as a chauffeur car. Then, when we're out in the sticks, I'm going to be getting behind the wheel to see what it's like as a driver's car. So, let the luxury continue. Brits seem to favour the fashionable SUV these days. For the Chinese, the four-door saloon is the ultimate expression of affluence. It's all to do with legroom. The more legroom your car has, the more successful you are, and the more successful you are, the better you're looking after your family. And here, that's what life's all about. And as you can see, the Spur does pretty well in the legroom stakes. I've absolutely bags of the stuff back here. This is no Ford Focus, believe you me. And the space I've got is just one part of the Spur's luxurious feel. Most of the cabin is swathed in this gorgeous soft hand-stitched leather, which is available in 12 colours. And then there's this wood veneer that's cured for 72 days and then handcrafted in Bentley's woodshop. And just look at these polished metal supports for the rear tables. I mean, that is proper craftsmanship. There are plenty of gadgets to keep you occupied too. I've got this touchscreen remote control that gives me access to most of the car's systems from the back seat. Climate control, seat heating, sat nav, stereo. I could do it all through this. The graphics are pin sharp too. I've also got this optional system that gives me a Wi-Fi hotspot in the car, plus these two screens that could use separate content. So, while I'm browsing the internet, my mate could be listening to music on his iPod through his wireless headphones. Clever stuff. And it's a good job there is so much to do in here because it's distracting me from the absolute bun fight that's going on outside. There's a silly amount of traffic and absolutely no way of knowing what any of it's going to do. Chinese driving is quite interesting. If there's any sort of gap whatsoever, then someone will drive into it and with no warning whatsoever. I don't often say this, but right now, I'm really glad somebody else is doing the driving. And considering how mad the roads are, I'm actually feeling very chilled out. The ride's perhaps a little bit firmer than you'd expect from a luxury saloon, but it's still really, really comfortable. Although there's a bit of road noise, the cabin's really, really quiet. You'd never guess that it was a 6-litre W12 that could hurl this 2.5-tonne car from 0 to 60 in 4.3 seconds. And given the right road and the right circumstances, the Spur can reach 200 miles an hour, though hopefully we're not going to be doing that today. So we're now about 150 kilometres north of Beijing and I've been at the wheel for a good couple of hours now and thankfully life's just as good up here as it is in the back. 
my seat's got 14 way electric adjustment, plus it's heated and cooled, and all the controls are dead ahead of me, so the driving position is fantastic. Being in the spur is actually a very different experience from the driver's seat because you get much more of a sense of the explosive pace on it. We're already going at a fair old lick as it is, and even if I just tickle the throttle pedal, the engine delivers some seriously brutal performance. The eight-speed gearbox also plays its part in that because it always seems to know what gear's right for the job at hand, and it gets there really quickly. Permanent four-wheel drive also means you can carry a surprising amount of this pace through bends as well. Fair enough, you can feel the car's colossal weight moving around as you change direction, but for a car of this size, the hatchling's really, really tidy. So here we are in the mountains of Luanping County, which is the end of our route. We've come here because it's one of the best restored sections of the Great Wall of China. And I've got to say, it's pretty spectacular. In fact, most of what we've experienced in China has been fairly spectacular in its way. The epic scenery, the crazy driving, the seven star hotels, and the Bentley Flying Spur. Yes, it costs mega money to buy and run. If you can afford it, who cares? If you can afford it, it's a truly special thing.